Can you hear? Can Can you hear me? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mount Mansfield School District School Board meeting. Um, this is our annual celebratory um, Golden Apple Award. So I'm really glad you're all here. This is pretty great. Um, we have a quorum, which is great too. So we can have an official meeting. Um, I'm just going to. Um, I'm Edie Granning. I'm the board chair. Just going to run through the agenda and then I'm going to start introducing people and get on with the celebrations. And then at the end, the board will just have to stay for a few minutes because we have just a couple of things. And you're welcome to stay for that. But when I say you, you can leave if you want to, do not feel like you have to stay because truly you do not. So, um, see, for the agenda, we have called the meeting to order, review the agenda. Um, any community comments? If anybody wants to share anything with the board, you have the opportunity to do that. Um, five minutes at a time per person, and we need people to tell us where who they are, what town they're from, and they should be a resident of our district. Um, then we're gonna do our Golden Apple Award presentation. Um, and after that, we will, um, as a board, talk about the resolutions for the Vermont School Board Association. Um, then we have one of the charters from our Regional Collaboration Committee to approve. Um, and then if there's any other business, we will do that and then we will adjourn. So not a very heavy meeting, a little bit of celebration, a little bit of business, and then we go out and join something better. So thank you everybody so much for being here. Um, any changes to the agenda before we do that? Any community comments? Anybody want to share anything with the board floor now? Okay. Um, don't hesitate to get food and drink while we're here. Um, just again, yeah, just relax. All that. Um, I just want to say I reached out to the principals at the schools and got back um, so much information about the volunteers in the schools. We are in almost all of our schools back to the pre-COVID volunteering, which is fantastic to have that level of community support in all of our schools. It really makes it better for the staff, for the students, for the for everybody involved, for the principals, and we just build community, um, which is just pretty great. So I just want to thank you for your volunteering. Um, we have schools that have thousands of hours and hundreds of hours and just lots and lots of volunteers, but not all of our schools are at that level yet. So if you're in a school that isn't quite at that level yet, I think we're all working toward that, which is just pretty great. Um, do you have anything done before we uh, Just thank you. Uh, as he said, we have so many people that give so much to our schools, and it's what makes us special. And I know, you know, some of the people that are getting the awards tonight, and I just want to say thank you. You're making a difference in children's lives and for our schools and our community. So thanks for all of you. Um, we have a fully volunteer school board also, so we have an awful lot of volunteers in the room. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, be, be all are better when we work together and we just do that at so many levels so thank you all right you don't need to listen to me anymore um todd i'm going to have you come up first jericho elementary school first of all so i'm tom rolling the principal at jericho elementary and i have the privilege of offering this to bonifonic can you come up while we talk about you so you can blush um so I'm new, new to Jericho, but um, this year I've been getting to know Bonner and she has been an unbelievable asset for our school this year. I, I, I don't know, how many days a week are you in the school? Just, just two? Yeah, I would have guessed a lot more, but two uh, every, every week all year is a lot. And she will do anything that is asked. We love the library and helping sort in there, but whether it's laminating and organizing all the stuff that is just easy to fall through the cracks in the school, um, that we just sometimes don't feel like we don't have time to make this beautiful or that organize this to the level it needs or anything. Bonner does with an amazing smile and, a, and an, a, you know, an energy that just is contagious. Um, and then you add into that, that she's just an inspiration for us all. Um, she, uh, she broke a, a weightlifting national record not that long ago. Wow. I mean, really, just an impressive person. So not only getting things done, but to be an inspiration for our staff and for our kids. Thank you. So thank, much. You. So thank you.
Jen Cote from Underhill Central School is going to talk about that. Hey everyone, I'm Jen Cote, I'm the principal of Underhill Central School. My daughter, Leanne, is being present on the site. Sarah Greer is the parent of a fifth grader, third grader, and an incoming kindergarten student at UCF. She's participated at the PTO since before my arrival at UCF four years ago. She is currently the treasurer of the organization. Sarah is methodical, organized, and dedicated to the community of Huntsville Central School. She consistently offers her time and skills with events, such as UCF Fun Run and Family Movie Night. You will often find Sarah along with her family taking care of the school garden and grounds. Sarah is always willing to help with a fundraiser too. Recently, Sarah has worked tirelessly to trying to obtain funding for updating the garden and playground at UCF. She has written several proposals for the town committee to review and hopefully get their approval to some of the town's art book In addition to writing the proposals, she sought support from expertise in the field of gardening and playground structures. She has worked with playground companies, fencing companies, landscapers, and expert gardeners to guide her with creating proposals that reflect the needs of our current group. This has been a major undertaking. Hopefully with Sarah's initiative, the town committee will provide us with some funding to start a few projects at UCF. Sarah's participation with the PTO and dedication to our community is appreciated. Every single contribution she has made has made a difference to our student and school success. It is my great pleasure and great honor to work there with the Golden Apple Mortgage Show. Thank you, Sarah. Well, I'm just going to put it out there that award winners are invited to talk if you want to. <laughs> Don't hesitate, but we are, again, grateful to have you. Um, Mike Weston, you're next. And all of the High school. Hi, uh, my name is Mike Weston, and as he said, I, I have the privilege of being the principal of Mount Mesa High School. Um, I got there 18 years ago as the assistant principal, and the first thing that shocked me was there's this group called the Academic Boosters. Who the heck heard of an academic booster group? Um, but we have it. Um, and they do so many darn neat things for us. And there are a whole bunch of people in the background of the boosters, you know. There, uh, and tonight we're honoring Julie Rusager, um, who's, I just found out it's her, her youngest is graduated this year. It's been 20 years that she's been a, a parent in our district. Um, and uh, Julie's done a ton of things, but the one thing I wanna highlight that I hear kids talk about all the time, and I don't think she even knows this, is every quarter they give out the uh, honor, roll, honor roll reward cards. And they're, the local businesses donate things and kids go around and I don't know for how many years you've been writing every name of every student and we have 300 plus a year in the neatest most <laughs> lovely penmanship you've ever seen. I hear kids talk about it and they, and they show it to people and the time the energy the care that that goes into that simple act of writing names um and, and to speak to sort of like Lemming, the, the thing Julie started doing a couple of years ago is we used to have this big pile of leftovers, not everyone would pick them up. And it would fall to a secretary or me or someone to try to organize them to get them out. She started taking them home and organizing them by advisor, which then bringing it back to us. So all these little things, A, I'm going to point at Kennedy, who's one of our students, make students feel cared and loved by our, our, our community and make our school special. So Julie, thank you so much for everything. You're running away. Does that mean you don't want to talk? <laughs> Julie and I have volunteered together for years, so she's not expected. I would say, if anything, that I feel like I'm the recipient because, you know, I, my kids have been, my oldest is almost 30. She started in middle school and fifth grade. And because I had the freedom to do a lot of things with all the kids, I just have so many mm -hmm. memories. And it just so much fun, whether it's you know, field trips to Montreal or um, band concerts. Just, yeah, I have more memories than I have. So I feel like I'm the one who's really the blessing. Okay. 
before I called it a principle, I just want to add on the honor roll rewards cards that businesses in every one of our five towns make donations. And it's really, really phenomenal community building. We reach out to those groups and the, the and sometimes they can make a donation and sometimes they can. And it's just this lovely relationship that we have. So for anybody who's involved with any of those businesses, thank you also. Uh, Sally Hayes, you're up. And Sally's the principal at uh, Brewster Pearson Huntington. Um, I am the principal of Brewster Pearson Huntington. My name is Sally Hayes, and I get to give out two golden apples tonight. So I don't know, Carmen Noel, can you please come up? So I'm going to be, I have the honor of giving these awards to Carmen Tedesco and Noel Sprite who are the parents of Eleanor Streit and Cooper Streit. Um, Cooper is a fourth grader <laughs> at Brewster Pierce. Uh, Eleanor is a first grader at Brewster Pierce. So second. second grader going into third grade. Oh my gosh, thank you for correcting me. So um, when I first came to Brewster Pierce, the then chair of Pi said to me, we have all these little fundraisers. We don't want, really want the kids going out and selling wrapping paper and all these things. We don't want them going out there. What can we do? So. The then Margaret Taft, that then became Beth Maurer, that now became the Sprite Tedesco crew, started a um, silent auction. And donations would be made, and we would line the hallways at school, and people would come to school, and they would place a bid, and they would um, come back and get, you know, get their um, item, and that was our fundraiser. It turned out to be really successful. It started off being this like people loved it because community people could give donations and grandparents could come buy things. So it was this great relationship. Well, on the scene pops Carmen and Noel, and they had this brilliant idea to put the auction online to get more people from farther away to be able to participate in the fundraisers of Brewster Pierce. So for several years now, Carmen and Noel have, um, have led this amazing effort and we have now six times the amount of fundraising that comes in. So we really have reduced, we really only need to do this really every other year now. So um, it's been huge in that way, but the more important thing is all the children at Brewster Pierce benefit from the work of Pi. Right? So we have class donations of owl pellets, books, field trips to the Montshire, all different kinds of things. But we also have whole school celebrations and things that happen for every single child. All 125 kids at Bruce for Pierce get to enjoy um, things like next week we have an artist in residence starting. That will be an amazing dance cabarera experience for all the kids at Bruce for Pierce. Right? We also have had um, guest authors. So the list goes on and on. So really, I just want to say it would not be possible. And to the point that someone else said earlier, you've been doing all this behind the scenes, right? It's all behind the scenes. No one gets to say that this works, but they deserve to be honored because our school is a way different place to be. So thank you so much for everything. All right, our next principal, Jeremy Rector from right across the parking lot. Wow. Which is the the All right. So I am privileged to present this award to Jennifer Snow. So uh, Jennifer Snow cares deeply about the RES school community and is committed to a healthy and thriving partnership between the school and its parents and community members. Jennifer is extremely thoughtful as she coalesces the ideas of a community members through the parent teachers organization around many things like fundraising, um, providing resources for staff in need and ways to honor the hard work of all the staff at RES with appreciation days and sometimes appreciation weeks. Right? Uh, it's one thing to be a sounding board for great ideas and another to see them into reality. Um, Jennifer has the skill and the will to go so much farther beyond being an organizer and a champion. Uh, Jennifer is a doer. Jennifer often shows up to uh, shows up early to each event, stays late to help pick up. She makes sure things operate smoothly 
and coordinates all event personnel with grace and enthusiasm. It's through her great efforts, energy and enthusiasm and insight that we have seen our PTO flourish from just a few members that met maybe once a year to a robust team of a dozen that meet monthly. Uh, it's my honor, sincerest honor, to recognize Jennifer Snow with this Golden Apple Award. Rich community ties are a hallmark to a great school ecosystem. And uh, Jennifer has helped rekindle a partnership that brings community members together and focuses on continuous efforts that ensure RES is a welcome, welcoming community for all. So thank you so much. <laughs> so that's our last principal, but not our last honoree for today. So Kennedy, I'm going to have you come up. I don't have any gifts for you today, but they're coming. <laughs> so Kennedy Jensen is our student volunteer, um, student board member. It's not volunteer. Um, so she represents, and she's a senior. This is her second year doing this. She represents the student voice to the board um, for the community. Um, she, from the day that she started with us on Zoom, because last year we were on Zoom or Google Meet or whichever platform we happened to use for this setting, um, she wasn't afraid to tell adults what we needed to hear and to share information that was the student perspective. Um, sometimes it was more her perspective and sometimes it was a broader student perspective, but that's why she's there and she's there to to really make sure that we're not just adults who aren't in the schools every day making decisions, but that we have that um, feedback, right? And saying like, this is kind of how this works and you really need to know that as you're making this decision and just really um, being so comfortable sharing what, <laughs> sharing, no, because not everybody can do that. Not everybody can get thrown into a group of adults that they've never met before and say, so I have something to say and just telling us and in a way that we could hear it and in a way that was clear and thoughtful and um, provocative in a good way. So I just want to thank you for all of that, for helping us look at policy and write policy so that we can do this in the future. Because I, you know, for me, if we could set up the structure that will make it better mm -hmm. and that's how we're all going to learn and we're all going to grow and we're not going to keep making the same dumb mistakes. So thank yes. you so <laughs> much. <laughs> right? and I, so thank you so much for really for growing with us and for helping us to set up a system that will be lasting. Thank you for the opportunity. Provocative in a good way. In a good way. Oh gosh, yes. Um, I'll, I'll spare you guys with all of my provocative thoughts for the evening, but um, really, you know, I've worked after school at RES and I've gotten to see how, you know, parent involvement and community really fosters in this district. I was so welcomed. I think the reason I was so comfortable speaking is because of how welcome I felt even online and over Zoom um, by our staff here and by the volunteers who sit on the school board. So you guys are in good hands. I won't be here next year to stir things up, but someone else will. And uh, thank you guys all for what you do. Uh, well, yeah, I always do. So I, but I'll keep. Uh, I just, again, just want to thank everybody for coming tonight and honoring people that really deserve it and are the the backbone and the foundation of our schools. So thank you, and I can't wait to see you all in, in school soon. Yeah, and again, we really we thank you for everything that you do for our schools. We know that some folks volunteer in classroom, right? We're volunteering classrooms. Again. Yeah, volunteer in classroom, run events make sure that things happen behind the scenes, all of the pieces that are necessary and available. And when you step up and do that, it makes it better for everybody. So thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Um, you are welcome to stay. You are welcome to grab food and go. You are welcome to chat over there while we just do our board meeting here, but we have just a couple of little things to do. And if you wanted to stay for that, you're welcome to stay for that. Grab some Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah.
Andrew, you can hear okay, right? Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear fine. Thank you. So we only have two items on here, and I think they're going to be both quick because I don't think there's anything for one of them. So are there, and I think the group didn't get together, any resolutions for the VSBA? That we had talked about it, but we never got together. This was the meeting that we were going to actually bring it up to. So Katie and I were talking about one. We just are hoping you are unsure of where to go if you have any questions. Um, so we had talked about looking into a resolution around literacy. And one of the things that I had thought of is um, there is a, a movement to think of bringing um, legislation regarding um, higher education and the <clears throat> requirements for teacher certification and for that to include um, both types of learning uh, um, regarding literacy, both the science of reading and the balanced reading. And so we like kind of dove into that, looked DC, we started spending some time on the Literacy Council um, page, which is like the advisory group for the AOE regarding literacy. And it looks like some of the things that we had been talking about as far as moving that along is things that they have brought up to the AOE. And so they're well aware of some of the things that could happen that could move our state further along <clears throat> in regards to strategies that are working in other states to raise literacy rates. And so um, one of the things that we thought, well, there's like five or six steps that you could 
approach to make a, a greater impact. And one of them is around um, uh, early literacy um, evaluation, no, uh, screen, screening, sorry. And so we were like, oh, we have all these ideas, but can, should we talk to our literacy specialists in our district to know like that we're, I don't, I never want to impose something that's already happening or that we know that the state is, are, is already out there or that you may have heard resolutions already. Um, and anything that we would write, we would want it to be like fully supportive and supportive of the people who would be doing this work and not just some like lofty idea that we read about. Um, so we were just wondering if that made sense as a next step, like. Yeah, so probably, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, don't be shy. Don't try to do it in a vacuum. You can literally call up the SBA and ask to speak to the director, discuss it, and see what she knows is already going on. Okay. Don't you know? Don't spin your wheels on it because you may find that there is already work in progress, or that it doesn't belong there; it belongs here. But use them as a resource. Yeah, okay. That's what we pay our dues for. So I would do that almost before delving into literacy councils or other of the academia sides of things because they know a lot of people where they know where to go. They can cut the process. Right. That's what we felt like. And then I guess since we're sort of new to this, there's that weird feeling of like, is this something I know it's something we didn't have anything in that conversation. So I just threw it out there. But I don't know if do we then talk about it once we bring the res like once the resolution's written? Will we talk about it at the next board meeting and then submit it on the fifteenth? So yeah. I think we would have to approve it at our next okay. board meeting and yeah, and submit it. When are they do on the fifteenth? Is that yeah, they're doing June fifteenth? Yeah, they probably will be pretty flexible on that. Yeah. I don't okay. think that they're getting hundreds of these resolutions knocking down the door that it's going to be overwhelming. It okay. just has to do with the work of sorting through them and and what VSBA will do is you know they'll they'll make a recommendation on it to pass it on to the membership or not and you can even if it isn't passed on to the membership you can still bring it up again at the open meeting but it's just their sort of stamp that they you know examined it but we all as a board have to approve it right okay I just wanted to make so sure that I think the next step here would be a straw poll to say, do folks think that you should go forward in putting a resolution together about um, how literacy is taught? No, like I think it's early literacy screen, screen, yeah, early early literacy about, screen. about having the VSBA focus on early literacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that would mean you would be asking the VSBA to advocate to the legislature mm -hmm. in, a, in a place that they have not been doing work already. Mm -hmm. And, and getting something pushed forward. Right. Yeah. But I have this like real imposter syndrome about creating something in a vacuum and not knowing, you know, like, so it's hard for me to really dig into this without knowing how everybody feels about that. I think it's, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, if, you, uh, if you have any questions, you can always call in too. Okay. You know, he's leading a, uh, he's on our literacy council our task force okay. so you can answer some of your questions what I heard what I think I heard you saying but correct me please if I'm getting wrong is that it this is more about um when new teachers are in college making sure that they have some knowledge around early literacy screeners when they get out of college can give those analyze those and diagnose problems so that's um kind of combining the two different things we sort of we started out thinking about um higher education and then we were looking to see what had already been brought to the aoe's attention <clears throat> and we sort of we went through a bunch of research and spent a, a bit of time finding out what these other states have set up as far as like five steps to improve literacy from a legislative perspective. And that was one of them. The one thing that we hadn't really found evidence of that was bubbling out there were these early literacy screenings. That has nothing to do with the education. It would be like something that I hesitate to say 
it, it, you know, it'd be like a new, something new that would be imposed or asked of to, to screen every kid, you know, before they even get to third grade mm -hmm. to find um, reading uh, disorders. So or, doing some re consistent research grade screeners. Mm -hmm. I, would, I mean, that's uh, something I could get behind professionally, um, but I don't know if, it's, I mean, it's up to the board if that's something they think is of beyond the scope of these resolutions. Um, I'm opening up, I, I have thoughts, but I'm not going to And I would have thoughts too, but nobody else would have thoughts. And to me, the key is, is definitely getting your perspective and Andrew's perspective and, you know, a little collaboration there, I think would be valuable because it does feel like it's, you know, asking the state to ask the districts to do things. And so let's make sure we're asking right. ourselves to do the right things. So I think you're right. You know, it's it, it's a good idea that worth worth vetting internally, first internally being with, with the team and the staff team. Um, and then, and then I think, I, I just want to echo what Nancy said. I mean, I think like talk to our folks about that. Mm -hmm. Vermont perspective, I think, is a good next step. Take that maybe more of a big idea and go from there. This doesn't shout out as me as something I've heard about or you know have a passion for from some previous experience. I'd love to hear more. Sure, and I can just share um, that I think so. Literacy being one of these um, you know district goals, I was trying to think of things of how to support us in achieving that and. Also, you know, I have a kiddo with dyslexia, so I'm aware of other things. And there's this um, catchphrase of the Mississippi miracle, right? So Mississippi really implemented all of these different legislative changes, and they've seen like dramatic results. And if anybody's interested, I, Heather and I came across articles that really breaks down state by state what every state is doing and what states have done legislatively um, to make changes and what some of the results have been in their reading. So that's sort of where that came from. And I, this is a, a very different direction than what I usually see the SBA and resolutions going towards, but um, that doesn't mean anything other than it's it feels very brand new. It's not even a conversation that's been at a board level, as much as it's probably been at a district level, I feel like I've heard the words literacy screeners already, and I can't remember if I heard it in the district I work in or where I heard it exactly. So I think that definitely talking to some people in the state, talking with our, our in-house people too, and get that information and then see if this is truly a, a problem that needs to be solved and then bring it back and then talk to us about it. I have no idea about this, you know, it's not a subject that's been brought up before. I, I couldn't really weigh in on whether or not it's important at this exact moment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's timely because we're just solidifying our literacy assessment plan for next year. We'll include screeners. Um, kind of, you know, K to eight. Mm -hmm. So and that I think uh, Andrew can share that. With you. Okay, cool. So be a good place. The challenge is and not to like go on about this is like what is the screener? Right. You know what I mean? That that what is research based. Right. But I would say that and I'm not you know, Vermont typically does not like to do this, but many states have this have really have been moving to doing some real specific legislation on literacy. New York City, I don't know if you just heard about um that's obviously a city, but they're their mandate, the chancellor is mandating certain things. And of course, they have more students than we have people in the whole state of Vermont. So um, it's, it's uh, I, I don't think it's out in left field at all. Um, uh, and it, it, it might be outside the scope of the VSBA mm -hmm. and what they're, you know, typically do. And um, what Vermont has, you know, typically been comfortable doing. Right. It's a good sign that our district is already looking into it because we tend to like all the legislation that I've seen people bringing forward. I'm like, oh, yeah, we already do that. We do that. Mm -hmm. And people are like trying to do it statewide. So for me, that's a really positive sign with that. Um, 
I agree with everything that everybody has said so far. So yeah, it looks like you have a little bit of research and a little bit of time. Um, I'm not opposed to that at all. I think that um, we know that literacy is the base for all education. Mm -hmm. So, and we know that our numbers are slipping post COVID statewide. Mm -hmm. So if we can figure out, you know, that this is a way to bolster and to support everybody. And it's something that can be done and our AOE can act like yeah. win lots of wins. Yeah. I think you've been a bit off an adventure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And timely, because like I said, we, uh, Andrew can share what we're thinking of. And I, I just think it's something important for our community to know that we are aware and thinking about this and it's important to them, but also just that um, if we want change or we want results or we want data, we have to do things. And I I think that there it is timely and there is a lot of mixed pollination out there and, and mixed information. So it's, and there's a lot of easy to be on a bandwagon about something. And I want right. people to have the real information that of what we could do to really make a difference. Yes. Um, Cause the ones that New York is, is mandating, well, I want them, I've never even heard of. You know, um, so you know, there's just a lot out there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're gonna have the best literacy program in the country <laughs> by the time we're done. We can try, we might are. as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right, so that's all for resolution. Allison, I'm going to turn the floor over to you for the regional collaboration charter. Yeah, so um, just to clear on expectations, we're sharing what we've created thus far and soliciting feedback from the group and um, I thumbs up it, to go forward. I or? thought it was voted on by the committee and this is to get the board's final approval. Is that is that right? I thought so. Yep. But but all what you said is true too. Okay. <laughs> How about both? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So um so this is the regional collaboration committee's charter uh, draft until approved by the full board. Um, the purpose of the Regional Collaboration Committee is to ensure that the MMUUSD board is connecting and working with other regional entities that share our goals and mission to improve outcomes for students, staff, and our district. The committee will develop relationships, gain consensus from the board, and lead the regional engagement. Areas of interest for collaboration include and will be routinely areas of interest for collaboration include and will be routinely revisited are uh, some um, punctuation issues in the charter. So <laughs> before we prove it, we'll make sure that we have that fixed. Um, first, first area of interest for collaboration, establishing and leveraging relationships among school boards in Chittenden County um, for the sake of coordinating on policy and governments and coordinating around advocacy. Um, program collaboratives and opportunities, specifically around technical education, special education and pre-K, and operational improvements and efficiencies, specifically staff recruitment and retention opportunities and best practices and coordination. So the activity of the committee will be focused on those three bullets. Um, Near-term objectives for the committee in, in the next six to 12 months include Developing a list of board and district needs and bringing it to the full board for prioritization. So we would um, gain consensus around what we see as our own district's needs and um, look at how we could leverage um, regional collaboration to address those needs. Um, another near term objective would be to meet with board members from Chittenden County in collaboration with the BSBA. So just the, um, the active of having those meetings to collaborate, get to know each other, network, and then um, building board level awareness and consensus for CTE opportunities and challenges. So that would be kind of level setting around where we're at with CTE, um, what the challenges to date are, and what the opportunities in the future might be. And then hopefully using the regional collaboration group um, to advance and make progress on some of those opportunities. 
So how does everyone feel about that? Any comments, feedback, thoughts? I liked how it was organized. I feel like something that has been kind of a challenge in all of the different committees is like how to get the work done that we want to do on paper. Mm -hmm. And I really, I thought it was well organized. Yeah. And I liked the six to 12 months. Yeah. Breakdown. Like that was helpful for me. Too. Yeah. Thank you. I think we all put two meetings time into this, I guess. So I think some, it was thoughtful. Um, and, you know, mapping out the areas of interest and then making it concrete in terms of what we intend to do in the next year um, really kind of drives home what the goals are and, and what progress looks like. So now likely uh, Ethan hours are wrap on the mm -hmm. uh, regional uh, <laughs> uh, advisory board for the tech center. So that will inform when he goes back to these to those meetings and shares and you know um, advocates for it. Because in those meetings, um, if you've been to, the, I usually go to all of them, they, they really do listen and uh, there are opportunities to make changes based on whatever the challenges or opportunities are. Yes. So, um, yes. Do I need to do anything now or just? We just need to vote. To vote. Okay. Um, so, um, so it comes as a seconded motion, so we don't need a right to write comes from the committee. Okay. So all in favor. And Andrew, you don't have anything you want to add, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just throw in my two cents. I mean, I, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear these issues are being addressed. A lot of these have been talked about for a lot of years. Um, they might not have been on the front burner, but they've been on the middle burner or the back burner. And I'm I'm really glad to see that the board's going to kind of focus on this and and see uh, see what progress we can make and what we can learn. Okay. All in favor? I can just take a thumb. Uh, all right, no extensions, no opposition. So that, that is approved. Great. Um, at a meeting to come will be the list for the board prioritization, and we'll have that as an agenda item for that meeting to talk about the different things. So if folks have something that they would like us to collaborate regionally, you do not have to be on the committee. You could reach out to anyone on the committee or Kevin, who is at the honor roll, honor night tonight at the high school. So with your thoughts on what um, what you'd like us to be talking about more as a board. So it's not just the committee, we all put that list. It's like preparing a resolution for the <laughs> committee. Well, no, it's just like this. No, no, I know. <laughs> I would just add that I, I think the timing was that we're going to try to bring that list of initial ideas to the board at the next meeting, I think. We've got a meeting of the committee slated for the fifth or something. And we're going to yeah. so I get the ideas in by the fourth or fifth. Um, so I think by noonish on the fifth, that's the right date um, for the meeting. And then, but I think that's a great idea to, to slip those ideas. And I would say, I would even encourage within the framework of the concepts that we laid out or not, because it's early enough that we could make some changes. Those are just kind of early ideas. And we think these are the areas where we might focus on to give you all a sense of what we were thinking. So. Great. Thank you. Um, have other business? Does anyone else have other business? I have a question. Sure. Um, and I think this is for Diane, but it might be for UBD. Um, the early child care education piece that's been moving through the legislature. Do we have any any sense yet what implications are for the districts? It sounds like that's it's on its way to so, you know, sign into law. And it, what's what's coming our way? As the school piece goes into effect in twenty six. Okay. So there is time between now and then. Okay. Um, what does it you're mean? not panicking about it yet right no i mean they, they said they have a study committee that's going to okay. really take a look at do we have the room okay. you know how much is it going to really cost and does uh, do we have the you know, the actual capacity people to do it and then what the structure of oversight is going to look like also. okay yeah. and so does it i i have been 
following it to the to the degree that I read about it in Digger every week, but and it changed at the last minute. Yep. Okay, so, so yeah. is the idea that three and four year olds will be attending pre K at public schools the same way that we do in our district now on a smaller scale? So you want to talk about? Oh that? no! Oh, I mean, you're you're, you're there <laughs> every day. Yeah. Um, you're the huge. So you're the, more I, more the idea is. The way it's listed now is that four year olds four year attend olds. full day pre K in public schools. Okay. Um, three year olds will still, three year olds may attend in public schools, but there will still be spaces for them in as a, um, a more of a network of, of opportunity. So um, they're looking at now the way the law is written, if it, if it becomes law, more opportunities at, at home centers um that's the that's the place that is bolstered first and schools is the place that's bolstered last so starting at the oh. earliest in 26. okay so oh. that's just the way it yeah but schools will be coordinating for three and four days right or is it just um uh, I, I think some of that is yet to be yet to be determined decided. because they got to figure out um do you even have the space to be able to do it how much of it's really happening versus being studied? They make a lot of statements, but I I had this feeling like once they put it into a study, that means basically nothing's going to happen until the study's done. But they have the law, and I'll share it with you, but it essentially says that something happens to happen. That there's going to be, um, that the plan is to have um, more preschool opportunities for, for students and, you know, for three-year-olds at least the way i read it like you said uh, private partnerships and really looking at getting four-year-olds in for all day yeah. um for parents that want for families that want that so four-year-olds so all the four-year-olds in richmond could conceivably be at res or or, or, or somewhere or, or so right okay right. somewhere okay, okay. So somewhere school starts a year earlier, more or less, essentially. And, yeah, a, okay. and then there would be it's full know, day. So it's yeah. It, you get the full equalization, student equalized people. And I think one of the things they're going to need to like that's that's why we don't want to create the system too early because we won't get paid for the system until at the earliest twenty twenty six. And I think they need to really one of the things they're looking at is can they afford it because it does increase. At, education spending you know pretty significantly so they're going to need to figure out exactly what that's going to cost okay. but it's you know it's movement um also other other business so i just wanted to remind folks that the book that we're going to be reading is called joy what's it called I'm sorry. Sure, anyway, but what I wanted to say is that <laughs> if you don't want a hard copy, if you want an audio or an electronic version, Jenna is here and we just need to let her know so that because she's the one you haven't ordered them yet, right? Yep. So we want to make sure that we let her know because I have not yet let her know that I want a digital. Do we have a link in at the last board of our yep. last board meeting it just has like an overview book? It's Goldie Muhammad is. Do we? Um, do you have a date that you want to have that information by? End of the week. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So maybe that should come out as another message to. The, an email we can we'll send a reminder out tomorrow yeah. if we do With that. With all the options. Yeah. Yeah. You want a hard copy? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Do nothing. 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 We can get you okay. that. Okay. 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 Yeah. The default. Yep. Yeah. 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 So that's <laughs> that's all that I have on the agenda for tonight. So if we could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. second. Thank you, Katie. It's, um, it's all ball. in favor, grab a plate of food and head yeah. home. Thanks, everybody. It's it's a great so honor our volunteers. It's it's really, a yeah, great crew. Yeah. Really great people. Um, very, very, very